Hello friends and welcome to another Pauper League. I am Cooper the Red and this is Orzov Pestilence. Uh, this is a mid-range deck um, with kind of like a bit of a control tilt and um, a little bit of spice. This is something I tried before and really enjoyed and looking forward to get getting back into it. Um, so let's see, we're going we're gonna to start over at the lands here this time. We're going to start at Basilisk Gate. Um, traditionally, Orzov Pestilence decks do not use Basilisk Gate. They uh, will use Karoo lands, maybe some Gain Life lands, Bajuka Bog, and um, a lot of, you know, basics so they can get their uh, stuff into play. But um, when I played this previously, I mean, with Basilisk Gate, every one of your threats becomes must answer. And uh, Guardian of the Guild Pact can just, you know, like end games by itself. So we all know the power of Basilisk Gate and Call Gates. And um, while I was uh, experimenting with putting gates into everything, uh, this was one of the decks that I actually really thought that the gates were pretty good in. So we'll see uh, how it works out this time. Uh, so starting from the bottom of the creatures, we've got four of Thraben Inspector. No surprise here. This is one of the... Uh, mainstays of the proper format in white. If you're playing a white deck, chances are you've got some Thraben Inspectors. Uh, we've also got two of Arashian Cleric. Um, this is something I saw another a Pestilence player uh, using before, and I think it seems pretty good considering the meta. Um, kind of a hedge versus uh, burn decks, and then since um, I'm using the gates, I don't have any kind of life gaining in my lands, so having a little bit of extra life gain in this is, uh, seems pretty good. And it's also like a 1-3. We could be playing uh, a different creature. Um, I always have num trouble remembering its name. Anyway, it's a 2-1 for 2 mana, and it gains 4 life. Um, so, you know, that 1 extra life could be significant, but uh, a Ration Cleric has a much bigger but. Uh, as a 1-3, it can survive a Pestilence activation, and it can survive a Shrivel. So we're going to be trying some Arashian Clerics alongside Dawnbringer Clerics. Uh, while this uh, particular human gains um, even less life than the uh, the Arashian, um, it, it does have quite a bit of versatility, being able to destroy an opposing enchantment or even exiling an important card from the opponent's graveyard. So we've got two of these and one on the board. Um, we've got four Core Skyfisher. This is going to allow us to bounce... Um, it's going to allow us to bounce some of our value creatures like Thraven Inspector, Ration Cleric, Dawnbringer Cleric, etc. Um, also, big time, like it can bounce Omen of the Dead, which is actually really, really strong. Being able to replay Omen over and over again um, is one of the reasons for that uh, that combo being in the deck. Um, I think it would be really nice to find some room for some Journey to Nowhere because Core Skyfisher also plays very well with Journey to Nowhere. Um, but for removal, we've got a pair of Cast Down, or sorry, a four, full four of Cast Down and four Chainer's Edicts. These are some of the best removal spells that exist in Pauper, and we're playing the full set of both. Um, we've got a pair of Inspiring Overseer here. Uh, one of the better options in white for three mana, two one flyer, gain a life, draw a card, uh, both relevant in the uh, the meta right now. And then also just having an evasive creature that we can target with Basilisk Gate seems pretty good. Um, we've got two Suffocating Fumes um, to deal with either um, Cogate or uh, Koldotha Burn. Uh, two very popular decks right now, and worst case, you know, even if the card isn't uh, going to be able to do anything for us, we can still cycle it. Uh, so yeah, we've got the two Guardian of the Guild Pact, aka True Name Nemesis. Uh, this is pr has protection from most of the format, and is going to allow us to uh, get some serious damage in with the Basilisk Gate. Uh, I've got four copies of Pestilence, the namesake of the deck, and uh, as long as we have another creature in play, or if the opponent has a creature in play, we're going to be able to keep this around and uh, tap a, a black mana to deal one damage to everything. All creatures and uh, all players. This is um, actually like one of my favorite cards in Popper, one of my favorite cards in Magic, and uh, I'm just really happy anytime that uh, I'm able to play it. And um, actually, 
Pestilence is kind of low-key one of the reasons I'm playing the next card as well, Custody Squire. Uh, this is a 5-mana 3-3 three, three flyer with Will of the Council. Um, so when it enters the battlefield, uh, all players vote for an artifact, a creature, or an enchantment card. Uh, and I'm going to be able to put that card back into my hand. So if I have a Pestilence in the Graveyard, Omen of the Dead, Spare Supplies, or any of my creatures, I, I can put that card right back into my hand with Custody Squire. And then finally, we've got uh, two copies of Goliath Paladin to be able to take the initiative. We are not an initiative deck, but Goliath Paladin is one of the best things you can do at the top of the curve. So we're going to uh, have the option to be able to take the init initiative for some of our games. And um, I'm, I'm thinking just like with the style of deck that we have, uh, we should be pretty good at keeping it. Um, one thing that I haven't mentioned in just the run-through of the main deck here was Spare Supplies. Generally, you'd be seeing something like uh, Icar Wellspring in this slot. But um, strangely, even though this deck is black, it's not running Deadly Dispute, so we're not really going to be sacrificing um, the artifact to our spells or whatever. Uh, so we're not going to be able to get that secondary value out of Icar Wellspring, in which case Spare Supplies is slightly better because we can activate it like a clue, two mana, tap it, sacrifice it, draw a card, and then, you know, maybe we can get it back with Custody Squire, but um, just in general, you know, like it's one of the best uh, artifacts of this type right up there with Icar Wellspring because we can get two cards out of it. Um, as far as the sideboard goes, uh, we've got two nil spell bombs to deal with opponents' graveyards. Um, like, if I'm going to play these, I kind of like to play four, but uh, this is what we had room for. Uh, we've got one copy of Shrivel, um, for mostly for the uh, Hold Dotha Burn decks to be able to get rid of all those pesky goblins. Uh, four copies of Duress, just in case our removal is bad, we want something to be able to replace uh, those spells with, so we can take out our Cast Downs or Chainer's Edicts, put some Duress into the deck. Uh, we've got four copies of Dust to Dust mostly versus affinity but you know there are some other uh decks that um will get hit by this as well like any kind of wildfire strategy um and you know it, three mana for like a double stone rain that seems pretty good value we're going to play a full four of those we've also got three copies of prismatic strands one of the uh the best white cards in popper um this thing has so much versatility being able to uh save us you know like two spells against uh, a burn deck so you know like three mana counter a lightning bolt and then tap a white creature counter a galth blast seems pretty good um all, it also makes the rest of their turn more awkward you know like uh eliminating combat damage for example and then finally um one more copy of the dawnbringer cleric all right i think uh, that's enough time spent discussing the deck let's get into the magic yeah keep this Okay, guess we know what we're up against. Suffocating Fumes. Oh, yeah, yeah, technically I did. I uh, did not do very well. I was playing, um, I was actually playing Blackburn. Figured against all the Kadolta decks, it'd be pretty nice to uh, be able to burn them out, gain life. But things didn't work out the way I thought they would. Alright, so I think I want to hold up the ability to cast down here. Just in case they have something like uh, Swift Spear. Then I'm going to want to hit with cast down. Otherwise, I'm just going to wait for suffocating fumes to kill stuff next turn. I could, you know, like play the guild gate here, but yeah, I want to have the cast down just in case they have a threat that uh, doesn't die to suffocating fumes. I look at some streaming and saw your nick, but without information. Not quite sure what you mean. Eh. 
Everybody's on implement lately. Love to see it. Yeah, I didn't stream the qualifier. I was too competitive. Um, if I had done well, I would have done a review afterwards, but, uh, but I didn't, so we'll leave it at that. So we're going to use the Chainer's Edict here while we have a chance to grab a quality creature. That's pretty much the best thing we could expect to hit with our Edict. Opponent reveals a Lava Dart. Uh, sacrifices the Implement of Combustion to draw a card. Maybe looking for a land drop here. Finds one. Another Implement. I expect they cast the Lava Dart. Yep. Yeah, I mean, Pestilence has the tools. I think, anyway. So this is a clock, can attack for uh, six damage a turn, and the game in a few turns. Hopefully we can find a little bit of life gain to use with these core skyfishers. Let's go ration cleric. Five life with two cards in the opponent's hand, we could just be dead right now. And we are. All right, well, we really kind of suffered there for not drawing any of our life gain, but, you know, it's not like we have a ton of it. Speaking of, let's bring another Dawnbringer Cleric into the deck. Uh, Cooper, can't really catch your streams because of those pesky time zones, but I watch every upload on YouTube. Thanks, man. Hey, really appreciate you coming in to say so. i um, going to try and keep the... Uh, the YouTube uploads consistent, but um, my stream times are actually going to be changing in the new year, so who knows what ha what will happen. Alright, we're going to also bring in Shrivel. Uh, I mean, Duress seems fine. And we're going to want Prismatic Strands. Uh, we can take out most of our copies of Pestilence, take out this big stuff here. I'm getting transferred at work. So my um, my schedule is going to completely change. I'm no longer going to be a night worker. I think Chainer's Edict is kind of mediocre. Like, we're going to be casting it to kill a, um, a goblin token. Doesn't seem very good. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, that is a good thing. It's something I requested. It does unfortunately mean that, you know, like, I'm going to lose this uh, time slot on Twitch, which is a very nice time slot. But I uh, think that some other things just in my uh, my life should improve. I mean, being able to see the sun again it would be a nice thing. A lot of people just take that for granted. Uh, I mean, you can still watch the YouTubes at lunch, Blah Bear. But uh, yeah, um, that is going to be a fact of life in the new year. Uh, not too sure, not too sure what the new time slot's going to be. I'm going to have to uh, take a look at what's available. Probably try and get on, get on after um, 
aspiring Spike is uh, finishing his uh, his stream. No life gain again. I mean, we've got some removal, but eh. Okay, I like this one. Oh, man, I wish I got this as my seven. I want to keep all the cards here. They're all so good. Went for a little bit of damage here. We're gonna play another three bin inspector as a blocker. And then we'll play this black dragon gate. Name white and pass back. Oh, you're saying it's uh 1220 for you? Now oh, it's 720 over here. Oh, and a rebirth. This is going to be really good for my suffocating fumes. Oh my god. Get him for two damage. That's fine. Um, do we block here? Probably prevent more damage at a later time, I would guess. Play the Basilisk Gate. Pass back. Um, yeah, I don't think I attack here. If I was going to attack, I'd Suffocating Fumes pre-combat. I want to Suffocating Fumes on their turn in case they have a, uh, a Bushwhacker. Oh, jeez, Molten Rain. Well, they can't really attack, so we take very little damage that turn. Uh, let's send them with a Duress. While well, they still have some cards in hand. Uh, get Oh, they did have a Bushwhacker! Oh, is that, tr is that so, Shauna? Yep. Well... That's good news for you, then. You and me both. Because, yeah, I'm just doing, like, a little bit of quick math in my head, and it's going to be quite a shift. It's going to be, like, 8 to 10 hours later. Because if I'm starting at 7 now, and then I'm going to be leaving work at noon um, at my new schedule. So that's already plus 5 there. Okay, not quite that much. So maybe like 7 hours later than I usually start. I think I play the planes and then crack the clue rather than the spare supplies. This kind of like holds up. Maybe I have something, maybe some kind of interaction like a cast down or something. <laughs> Protocol on feed picks. I sent you a feed pick. You better respond. That kind of protocol.
All right, uh, here's a synthesizer. Reveals a chain lightning. Where's the chain lightning go? My face, yep. All right, uh, this is a great time to block. And crack the clue. Uh, spare supplies, try and draw a card that isn't a land. Well, let's go card that's not a land. Ugh. Well, <laughs> we got pretty flooded here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine lands in the top 14 cards is what it is. Ugh. Brutal. Ah. Terrible. And we die here. Yeah, Blah Bear. Uh, very, uh, very apt. Exactly the wrong cards on board for Shrivel to do anything. And we go to two. They have four cards in hand. We've got to be dead here. How are we not already dead? Yeah, Abandoned Hope is another great one to name. Another Kodotha deck. Nope, this is Goblin Combo. Well, our hand is real bad for Goblin Combo. Let's hope that we uh, draw some good stuff. What do we get out of the sideboard for this? We get Duress, Spellbomb. Yeah. I mean, Pachuca Bog is a pseudo spell. Has honorary spell status. Oh, nice draw. That might have just saved us. Because with the Skirk Prospector already down, they could potentially combo out this turn. Oh wow, they're going to Deadly Dispute. Didn't see that coming. Deadly Dispute, my Skirk's Prospector. 
Well, they got eight cards in hand. So the opponent's deck needs to combo with um, four cards. Uh, three cards, a combo with three cards gets them infinite mana, and then the fourth card wins the game. Hey, thanks for the follow, friend. So they need uh, Skirk Prospector, Future Goblin, and First Day of Class as the, uh, the, the three main cards for the combo. And then they usually use Makeshift Munitions as the final piece. Um, but I've also seen... Uh, what's that um, card that was downgraded recently? The Dark Dweller Oracle, I think it's called. And they use that to uh, to just continuously flip cards off the top of their deck over and over and over again. And, you know, like continuously play them until they have the, just this huge board that, uh, you know, there's no way that anyone could deal with. Uh, it seems like a fine time for Bajugabog. What do you guys think? Get rid of Faithless Looting and a Skirk Prospector. Um, they have a lot of cards in hand and they have the mana. I'm really nervous about just playing Overseer and then immediately dying. Let's wait a turn and then we can play Overseer and still hold up a cast down. That's the one, Dark Dweller Oracle. That card is awesome. Uh, I kind of just want to kill it right now. Get that combo piece off the table. Uh, they're going to... Oh! They're going to first day of class in response to my cast down. That's interesting. Not the card I thought they were going to respond with. Yeah, that's kind of seems like they just threw that away. Think maybe, oh, misclick. Okay. Yeah, they just misclicked. They probably meant to cast a Deadly Dispute. Hey, there you are. Where were you all last match? Where were you? Could use a Basilisk Gate right about now. Because, yeah, the um, losing the first day of class there is pretty painful. Very important piece of the combo. And then it's just gone. I think I want to play Thraben Inspector, hold up, or play Thraben Inspector... Hmm. Could play Thraven Inspector, crack Clue, try and dig deeper for Basilisk Gate. Uh, I think Core Skyfishers are going to be best for either blinking Thraven Inspectors or Overseers. Probably going to end up blinking Thraven Inspectors just because the way we're going to want to hold up mana for cast down. Uh, also, finding Pestilence would be incredible. Uh, pestilence is game-breaking if we can stick it on the field. I don't think they can ever win through a Pestilence with... Uh, 
I don't know, four mana up? Three mana should be enough most of the time. Hell, one mana should be enough most of the time, to be honest. They need a lot of uh, a lot of cards to play through a Pestilence. Oh, still haven't found what we're looking for. Oh, there we go. So we have to survive for one more turn. Uh, we only have one piece of interaction, though, so let's just hold up this cast down. So yeah, one, two, three, four, and we would have two activations of Pestilence. That's pretty good. We do still need to be able to untap, though. Wow, they have 10 cards in hand right now. I mean, this is the best time for them to go off, 100%. Uh, we have Dawnbringer as well. The Duress. Oh, that's so good. They can take the cast down and then combo. Yeah, we needed that Pestilence a turn earlier. Oh, they take the Pestilence. Maybe they're not ready to combo then. Because, like, you take the cast down now. If you're ready to combo. Yeah, it's over Lone Missionary. That's the one. I always forget the name of that card. Wow. Okay, that's a lot of putrid goblins. Let's crack that clue, see if we can find another pestilence. Or a basilisk gate. <laughs> nope and nope. Now we do have lethal in the air next turn, and we have a cast down. Oh shit, I should have, um, I should have bounced the Bajuka Bog. I guess it's not a big deal, they only have a Dark Dweller Oracle in the graveyard, so yeah, it's not a big deal. Um... I think I'll hold up Cast Down Crack Clue. Gaining life here doesn't matter at all. So they're going to unearth the oracle. Oh no! Sacrifice a putrid goblin. Okay, yep. So they're looking for good stuff off the top. I think I just let them go through this to try and drain as much mana as possible. The other option is to just cast down that Dark Dweller oracle now to cut them off from whatever they're doing. Of course, they would be able to continue to sacrifice at instant speed, but they wouldn't be able to play any of the cards um, from Exile until after the Dark Dweller Oracle was dead. But um, that could potentially leave us dead to them just having the combo. 
So uh, we're going to let them go through the motions with Dark Dweller Oracle here. We need to get through one turn. So if they can't find the last combo piece, or if they use too much mana, we might be able to cast down uh, an important part of the combo at the right moment. Yeah, the thing is, with two Putrid Goblins, it's going to be really difficult to do anything here, because they can... It's all going to be based on um, also their knowledge of the deck as well. Because like if they go first day of class first and then play Skirk Prospector, I don't think there's anything any way I could really interact. I guess I could get rid of the Dark Dweller Oracle and then just hope they don't have makeshift munitions. If they have first day of class... Okay, they're playing the Prospector before first day of class. That's a big deal. I mean, I think it is. I could be wrong, but uh, it allows us to cast the cast down, targeting the Prospector. And now they could cast First Day of Class in response, get infinite mana, Reveal as many cards as they wish with Dark Dweller. Oh, wow. Yep, okay. And they sacrifice the uh, Search Prospector for a mana. They still have five cards in hand, so they could have Unearth. They could have another Prospector. Yeah, they have another Prospector. So do they have uh, First Day of Class? Nope, First Day is an instant. And this looks like First Day of Class right now. Okay, so this is GG. Um, there's nothing we can do at this point. They're going to be able to uh, heal as many cards as they wish off the top of their deck, create as much mana as they wish, and then kill us with a makeshift munitions. I'm going to make them show us makeshift munitions, take a little bit of time off their clock, but um, makeshift munitions is in their hand, or right on top of the deck, they're not going to be losing very much time. I'm just going to make sure they have a kill con, right? No harm in that. Hey, handsome. Good morning. Yeah, Juke Wall, you don't see this deck very much anymore. It's uh, kind of complicated and it requires a lot of things to go right. There's so many avenues to interact with it. Yeah, they have the win with this. I know, they're playing a rare in the format. Cheaters. I was just checking if Pestilence, what uh, rarity it was printed at. And there's a saga, apparently still a common. Uh, I do not have Mortician Beetle in this deck. I don't know that one. There was a Pyro spell I was using for a while in this deck. In the opponent's deck. Beginning of the end step. If no creatures on the battlefield, sacrifice. Deals one damage to each creature and each player. Oh, it's a Pestilence for red. Oh yeah, that's actually terrifying. Oh, there's Goblin Matron. Interesting art on that one. Don't think I've seen that Matron art before.
Oh, what is this? Mix, mix matched art. Oh, they, there they is. They found their munitions. All right, let's go ahead and concede. So we're going to want Spell Bomb, uh, Duress, and maybe Dawnbringer Cleric. This is a card that might just come right back out. Uh, Love Suffocating Fumes, Edicts are kind of meh. Uh, Ration Clerics don't do anything. They do have artifact lands. The problem with strands is that, um, because they're playing the Dark Dweller Oracle, instead of comboing out for the win with makeshift munitions, they can combo out and put half their deck onto the battlefield, and then you just can't deal with that. It's too much. Not to mention the cards have haste, and they get, you know, extra plus one, plus one. So we're dealing with three, three putrid, uh, putrid goblins, three, three uh, Dark Dweller Oracles, two, two um, goblin matrons. Um, strands prevents the damage, so if we strands black and start doing pestilence stuff, pestilence does nothing. Just does nothing. Uh, this is fine. It's got a lot of good cards. Yeah, in this one way, we can't abuse Prismatic Strands. So everybody tear up your copies of Prismatic Strands. Card is garbage. Now, opponent is on the mulligan here, which makes the duress even better. All right, let's take something. Wow, they just have the combo. Well, let's take a piece of the combo. Thanks, handsome. Ooh, Basilisk Gate. Kind of want to play the Core Skyfisher so we can start attacking. Kind of sucks it takes us back a land drop. But we're not in danger of dying this turn, so this is like the turn to deploy it so we can start attacking. Cycles on Earth. And finds a black land, so that unlocks uh, Duress. Eh. 
and they could potentially just win here. So I think I hold up cast down. It's not worth tapping out to potentially die for one extra damage. And we have three points of interaction. Oh, your YouTube has been pulling Henry's channel, and it seems like he's highlighting Popper a lot. That's sweet. If I remember correctly, Henry's got some really fantastic editing. <laughs> whenever i'm looking for like particular decks i'm always really looking for some gameplay you know like uh uh I, I can definitely appreciate a deck tech but personally just speaking for myself i, I want to see how the deck plays Ooh, tons of history stuff Well, speaking of, my friend actually lent me a copy of Storm Before the Storm, um, which is uh, a look at the fall of the Roman Republic. I uh, haven't cracked it yet. Looking forward to getting into it, though. Yeah, if I remember correctly, it's written by Mike Duncan, who does uh, a history podcast that uh, I quite enjoy. Um, the Revolutions podcast talks about a bunch of different revolutions that have happened uh, throughout uh, human history. And the podcast actually just uh, ended rather recently. So it's a... Uh, there isn't any more coming, but you know, it's a complete series. It's... Pretty well done, I would say. Uh, link the podcast. I can try. Give me a minute. Try that. Oh, I would be interested in that, Handsome. Please share. Uh, I would love to play Inspiring Overseer, but I feel like if I did that, I would die. The opponent knows we have double cast down, so we have interaction. I don't really want to take that down. Uh, I think that happens tomorrow.
I want to hold up both my cast downs. <laughs> that is kind of wild. We could get an untapped land. I'd like to play this Pestilence. Um, MTGO allows me to play the formats that I want to play. I want to play Popper, and uh, I was playing quite a bit of Modern previously. So if I want to play those formats, it has to be on... Uh, Magic the Gathering Online. Arena is not an option. And then also the um, economy is way better on Modo or MTGO. Uh, being able to just buy the cards that you require with real money and uh, sell them back for, you know, like, well, it's, it's tickets technically, but tickets are one-to-one -one with American dollars. Maybe I should have hit the Putrid Goblin instead. I mean, it's six of one, half dozen of the other. It's always going to be a gamble. If they have Unearth, it doesn't mean anything. And if they have, you know, another Putrid Goblin, then they're just fine. I think most of the time it's better to hit the Putrid Goblin. Because while the first day of class trigger is on the stack, when Putrid Goblin comes back into play after persisting, it's still a 1-1. One, one. So you can actually cast it down before it gets the plus one, plus one counter. But it looks like we're not getting killed by the combo this turn. Okay. Very not bad. Um, I think it's time to play, play Pestilence. We didn't get an untapped land, but... We would still have one activation, which is better than having no interaction with the opponent at all. Okay, here's the first day of class. So that's first day of class number three. Hey, we all start somewhere, Vex. Oh my god, that's so good. Okay, we still do have a chance to interact, though. So see how this goes on the stack here? So we interact now, before the plus one, plus one counter goes on the prospector. Oh, shit. Okay, that was my bad. Now they just have infinite mana. So yeah, I needed to wait and then activate it when they sacrifice the Putrid Goblin, which would take the Putrid Goblin off the board. So yeah, here they have infinite mana. And if they have uh, makeshift munitions in hand, we're dead. 
I guess, like, technically they could even kill us with a Dark Dola Oracle in hand here. They just have to produce a ton of mana on the spot. So yeah, for example, Handsome, if they produce an arbitrary number of mana, a million red mana, um, then the Sk Skirk Prospector dies. Uh, they go there. They continue their turn in their main step. They play Dark Dweller Oracle, and they, they they can use that mana to sacrifice the Putrid Goblin unbound a number of times to find uh, makeshift munitions off the top of their deck, and then kill us with the uh, makeshift munitions and Putrid Goblin. So yeah, I had to hit the Putrid Goblin there. That was, uh... We don't know. That's why I'm waiting. And they have to make just huge amounts of mana if they have the, the payout. They need to make... Especially if it's Dark Dweller Oracle. Like, with Makeshift Munitions, they could stop already. But with Dark Dweller Oracle, they need a lot of mana. Maybe 100 mana. I don't know. Maybe only, like, 40. It depends on... Uh, what the top of their deck holds. If they're able to find a uh, a Goblin Matron, that means they can get another Skirk Prospector, or maybe they just find a Skirk Prospector, or uh, continue making mana. But yeah, the just the way they're they're doing this here, it makes me think they have a Dark Dweller Oracle in hand. And you know, if they had another Putrid Goblin in hand, then uh, activating the Pestilence when Putrid Goblin was uh, persisting would have just given them the game anyway. So, again, without knowing what the content of their hand is, it's difficult to uh, decide exactly what the right play was. But I am pretty sure this was the wrong one. Oh man, the thing is, we might actually just time them out, especially if we had made them go through the entire thing, uh, game one, they would be timing out here, but they're, they're not even in the red yet. Introduction to Prophecy, one top. Plays a chromatic star. For green mana, there's a Skirk Prospector, so they have infinite mana again. Here's a Putrid Goblin, sure. Mass Vandal gets rid of the Pestilence. But that's all their cards. They don't have the combo. They don't have the win. And you know, I think they have a decent board, but it's not great. I can Custody Squire the... Uh, oh no, the Pestilence was exiled. I can't Custody Squire it again. Oh, and that is a big swing. Maybe we are just dead. Uh, how many gates do I have? Oh man, I'm one gate shy. I can attack for six with my core sky fisher. Let's see if we can, oh man, let's see if we can overseer into a gate. Woot. So smart and handsome. And they have four minutes left. I think we win this match. Better lucky than good. Uh, I mean, that was kind of like we played into it, right? We played into our outs. So, I think that was uh, well earned.
Okay, that's a win. Let me just taste the salt from here. Come on, opponent has zero. Let's go already. There we go. Was this a good hand? This is pretty mediocre, to be honest. We got the Pestilence, the Raven Inspector, Spare Supplies to draw cards. But yeah, not a huge fan of this hand. Uh, this hand is not going to work out, though. So we're going to quickly mulligan this. And I guess I'll keep this one. Um, like, we have Basilisk Gate, but we're so far away from casting Guardian of the Guild Pact. I think we're going to get rid of that one. Unfortunately, we don't have any way to shuffle, so that's just at the bottom for, for the rest of the game. Opponent plays an Island and a Delver of Secrets. Okay, so is this Mono Blue? Looks like Mono Blue. You could play Delver in a Terror deck. It is Duable. No flip. And yeah, here's a Fairy Seer. I think this one's going to be tough. This match. Uh, Grim, that and it also um, blocks uh, red creatures like 1-1 one, one Goblins, whereas Lone Missionary just dies. What are the odds they just drew that preordain? That's right. You missed out on your 3-2, friend. Uh, scries, two to the top. All right. Uh, let's get that mutagenic growth out of your hand, I guess. Oh, wow. And deep dish on the fairy seer? Either that or they're trying to hold up a spell stutter sprite. Yeah, deep dish. Oh, well, that's uh, pretty strong for the opponent, for sure. I guess we'll kill the uh, ninja of the deep hours while they're tapped out, so they can't uh, counterspell or spell pierce or dispel. Fairy Seer coming back down. Okay, uh, Moon Circuit Hacker comes in, nothing we can do about that. And allows them to rummage, basically. To loot, I guess. They get rid of a mutagenic growth, play a land. And Delver of Secrets. So they have two mana up currently, could be a counterspell, could be a spell starter sprite. Uh, I think we're going to play... Ooh, actually, that's really good. Uh, if they have Counterspell, they just, like, Counterspell it. But if they have Spell Stutter Sprite, Suffocating Fumes is the best. Let's gamble on Fumes, I guess. And we'll do it on their turn. They only need one counter spell anyway, so. 
I guess if we let them untap, they could have double spell stutter sprite. I mean, I don't want to let them flip the Delver, right? So I have to do it on their upkeep. Unless they respond to something, unless they do something here. Oh, wow. It just worked. That is pretty ideal. Uh, I was really kind of hoping for a swamp here. We could Pestilence kill both of these. Okay, no reveal. Uh, which one do we block here? Do we block anything? I mean, the damage isn't a really big deal here. If we keep the Overseer, it's better at blocking ninjas in the future. Then again, we're probably just going to be playing Pestilence anyways, so that kills Overseer. Make sure they don't have two ninjas. Only one ninja for you. Okay, no ninjas, they use their Muta. Thing is, if we loot, if we use pestilence, we lose it. I think it's probably worth it to get rid of two cards, though. And if they have muta, we get to keep the pestilence. And also, if they play creature this turn, we also get to keep the pestilence. So they have to just do nothing for us to lose the pestilence here. I guess that's worse if we draw Basilisk Gate. Okay, we managed to win that one. Sweet. That really worked out. Let's bring in Shrivel. Uh, we can bring in Prismatic Strands. Uh, let's see here. Dawnbringer Cleric doesn't seem very good. A ration cleric. These two, these four cards are pretty mediocre. Like they're they don't really have any enchantments we want to destroy. Their graveyard doesn't really matter. So definitely take out the Dawnbringers. At least the Arashian clerics are gaining us an extra life, and they can block uh, the uh, the ninjas. Okay. I don't think I want to bring in the third Prismatic Strands. I don't know. Like, Prismatic Strands aren't that great in this matchup. They're okay. Um, 
can buy us a couple turns as long as the opponent doesn't have counter magic. Uh, can prevent the ninjas from drawing cards. Be nice if we had uh, some more good flyers. We got some pretty decent ones though. Eh, it's all right. Ooh, that's a good draw. If I play planes right now, I can play the Thraben Inspector before opponent gets a chance to spell Stutter Sprite. But that means I won't be able to guarantee Suffocating Fumes on turn 3. Raven Inspector blocking the Delver of Secrets could be important if they have a ninja. Set that up. Set up the block. Downgrade Restoration Angel to common. Let's go. No flip. I'm gonna snap the Thraven Inspector here. No attacks, just hold up counterspell. All right, here's a guild gate go. Oh, and they play spell stutter. Ah, oh, Sean's welcome to lurk. All are welcome to lurk. There's a fairy seer. Uh, potentially setting up Spell Stutter for my Suffocating Fumes. Really looking for an untapped land here. Untapped land would be ideal. Give me a Plains or a Swamp, if you please, deck. One Swamp or one Plains. S'il vous plaît. Mm, not that lucky. Do have cast down available though. So we could cast down the Delver of Secrets before it gets a chance to be a 3 2, which isn't killed by Suffocating Fumes, before the opponent gets a chance to Spell Stutter my cast down. Although I do think this tilts our hand a little bit. Right, you have another ninja? Yeah, you do. Oh, they have a lot of cards in hand, thanks to these Moon Circuit hackers. Yeah, and then they just pass here. They, I think they know about the suffocating fumes. Seems like pretty obvi. Um... Let's play the Black Dragon Gate and then just hold up Suffocating Fumes here. Could play the Arashian Cleric and then we just have two good blockers. And then I could play the Basilisk Gate and crack the Clue Token. So they play the Spell Stutter Sprite, so they have another creature to transform into a ninja, since I can't block it.
another moon circuit hacker replacing itself. They got seven cards in hand, one of which is Spell Stutter Sprite. Uh, I think they also have a... Um, uh, the one that scries. You know, they're having some trouble with their land drops, though. Ooh, prismatic strands. That's interesting. Play spell slayer now. I dare you. Attack all. Sweet. Great time for prismatic strands. Oh my god, this Prismatic Strands is going to be godlike. It either pulls two counter spells out of their hand, or they just wasted both of those mutagenic growths and they draw no cards. Sweet. Okay, we find a cast down. I think, hmm, should I hold up mana for cast down? Should I just spare supplies? Because we've got one, two, three spells we can cast on their turn. They can't deal with all of that. That's too much. They don't have enough mana. See if we can get that Suffocating Fumes to resolve. Alright, what do you say? No flip? No flip. Here's a Fairy Seer. If we can get this to resolve, it's a five for one. Two bottoms. Ooh, Guardian of the Guild Pact. One, two, three, four. So we don't have enough for Guardian and Suffocating Fumes, unfortunately. Ah, oh, that's too bad. I was hoping we would get something here. We don't have Cast Down and Suffocating Fumes now. Unfortunate. but we do still have Prismatic Strand Suffocating Fumes. Yeah, Delver's a total troll. It's difficult to flip Delver with the opponent's deck. Um, they don't have a ton of instants or sorceries, but it is the best human to play in, in the one-drop slot. So it's just like, okay, we're, we're playing that. It's either Delver's Secrets or Flying Min. Yeah, we'll just take one. That's fine. Okay, I think we have to respond to this Fairy Miscreant with Suffocating Fumes, because once this resolves, Spell Setter Sprite, which we know that they have in hand, counters the fumes. Uh, 
So let's get that counter spell. And now we should be able to resolve our Guardian, which is going to be able to do big, big damage. Big, big damage. We get double uh, activation. Oops. Plus we have uh, Prismatic Strands in the Graveyard. Although they do get to counter that with uh, Spell Starter Sprite. Oh, actually, no, we have Cast Down, so they don't necessarily get to counter it. No flip. Two flyers coming in. Sure. That's fine. Let's crack the clue. Find Custody Squire. And let's attack for lethal. Good game. Looks like another Mono Blue Fairies deck, but they're playing Snow Covered Island, so it could be Is It. Uh, you know I'm here for you, Chuck. All right. Two to the bottom with Fairy Seer, and we find Bajuka Bog. Let's get this Orzhov Guildgate down and pass the turn. Next turn, plan is Spare Supplies. Although we might go for Chainer's Edict. Um, if, for example, they uh, play land and then go for a Ninja the Deep Hours, uh, we would definitely want to Chainer's Edict that Ninja. Okay, they're playing a Fairy Seer here, setting up uh, their Scry. They did go bottom-bottom, so I'm wondering if they have the second land drop. They do. And here's a Preordain to continue to set themselves up. They did top-bottom, so they're going top-top here. And we find Swamp. I think I want to set up for Suffocating Fumes next turn, so let's just pay, play Spare Supplies here. We do have to be a little bit worried about a Spell Stutter Sprite, though. So we don't know that uh, Suffocating Fumes is just going to work here, unfortunately. Oh, okay. Well, Spell Stutter Sprite isn't going to work anymore, but they could just have Counter Spell. So I think we probably Fumes on their turn, try and tap them out, then we can cast down their Ninjas or something. Uh, do we want to do it on upkeep? I don't think so. I think we do it in the attack step. Uh, kind of close. Well, it's too late now anyway. We could try to cast down the ninja to force them to react in some way, and then, like, force them to react with a Spell Stutter Sprite, for example, and then they would be tapped down, and maybe we could get the Suffocating Fumes to go off next turn.
but that's quite a bit worse against um, Ninja of the Deep Hours. All right, so they play Ash Barons here, so they're going to have double counter spell. I'm going to do Suffocating Fumes. And the, yeah, they have Counter Spell. All right. Is what it is. They still have Spell Stutter Sprite up as well. Oh, no, nope, because they're playing Deep Dish. All right, so we're going to kill uh, Deep Dish. Oh, we can actually kill both of their creatures here. That's wonderful. That slows them down a little bit. Problem is, spell starter sprite for course Skyfisher. Oh, oh they're going to ice my white land here. Oh, that's brutal, actually. So let's use the spare supplies. Because that's my only white source. And I got a bunch of white cards, but no white mana. Unfortunate. Oh, find Pestilence. That seems really good. And now we know that our opponent is on Is It. So they have another Moon Circuit Hacker. We have to draw a card with it. Here's the Fairy Seer again. Uh, two to the bottom, and Augur of Bolas. So they've tapped out. Oh, and play an island, revealing Counterspell. So what I'm going to want to do here is Pestilence for one, get rid of everything except for the Augur of Bolas. And we know they have a counter spell. Oh, they have a ninja, the deep. Down to eight. Okay, they let the creature resolve. I think we just pass the turn here. Oh, yeah, I'm, everyone misses Bonder's Ornament, especially Tron players. Bonder's Ornament was just an incredible magic card. The best three mana rock. Well, there's a Scred, so that gets rid of the Cleric. And I think it's worth losing this Pestilence to try and kill that ninja. Alright, uh, again, we know they have Counterspell, so I'm not going to cast Guardian of the Guild Pact into that. Oh, I really wish we had more white mana, damn.
Okay, there goes that counter spell we knew about. Cast the spare supplies, resolves. Uh, find another core sky fisher. It's kind of hoping for a guild gate here so we can make more white mana. Got a handful of white creatures here. Opponent plays a spell stutter sprite, end of turn. Uh, they're going to attack with it, probably turn it into a ninja. Yep. Ninja the deep dish. Back again. Draws them another card. Oh, and Crimson Fleet Commodore giving them the Monarch. They only have one mana left. We don't have enough to Pestilence kill both. Damn. Uh, so we could cast down the Commodore. I uh, really wish we could play this Guardian here while their mana was kind of tapped down. I mean, we can play it, but then they get to kill us with the Crimson Fleet Commodore. So I think we play Inspiring Overseer and cast down the Commodore. Could play Core Sky Fisher, return Basilisk Gate. Getting down a Guardian plus kill Crimson. How do we do both? We have uh, five mana, and that would cost six. Oh man, they probably have like Dispel or Spell Pierce or something. Nope. No land again. Brutal. I end up playing the Overseer so that we can draw a card, try and find that land. Plus it trades with Ninja, so if um, they don't have the removal spell for Overseer, we can take the Ninja down. Opponent puts two cards at the bottom with Preordain. Uh, moves to combat. Absolutely taking this block, 100%. Uh, do we know if they have another counter spell? I don't think we do. Oh man, there's a terror. We at least we get to play the Guardian of the Guild Pack though. Uh, we've already played a land, so I guess cracking spare supplies at this point doesn't really do much. Let's just like hold up two mana so it looks like we have something. I was almost wondering if we should have just blocked the other way because returning Talarian Terror... Uh, for a ninja seems kind of poor. Uh, my F6, that is the wrong thing to be. Another Guardian of the Guild Pact. They do have mana up, though, at this point to start countering. Our mana really failed us here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. We can activate twice. That's eight, nine, ten damage. Not enough. They have the uh, they have lethal here. If we don't have a block for Teleri and Terror, I think we just start by activating. Uh, hold on a second. Maybe we're supposed to course Skyfisher return spare supplies to start, or maybe we're just supposed to ration cleric gain a little bit of life.
Opponent has seven cards in hand, by the way. Monarch is a thing. Oh man, they're going to double spell stutter sprite this Arashian Cleric. Yep. Nothing we can do about that. One, two, three, four, five, go to one. Then we can't even activate Pestilence. Yeah. I mean, we got screwed on our white mana. That's a pretty big part of it. I mean, looks like a pretty good attack here, opponent. And we're also down on time in game one, with less than 16 minutes on the clock. We're not down by a lot, though. Less than a minute. Something to keep in mind, though, if we end up going to a game three, time could be a factor. So I'm going to have to try and play a little bit faster than I have been. And opponent's long pause here is definitely helping us out in the uh, getting back on track for our clock. But it um, doesn't mean that we're going to have to win game two. So that's step one, win game two. What do we have in the sideboard for this matchup? Not very much. We have Shrivel. Could bring in Prismatic Strands again. Protection from blue. I mean, it even gives protection from red for their uh, removal spells. Can take out Dawnbringer Cleric. Yeah. Opponent is angry at me for not conceding. What a world. What a world. Just... <laughs> just concede! Well, just kill me. Wow. That's hilarious. Do it now! Kill me! Kill me, I'm here! There. I don't think, I don't know, we could bring in Spellbomb for their uh, their terrors, I, I don't know. I've already got Chainer's Edict, difficult to say. Two lands, no black mana, I'm mulligan that. Oh, I'm fine with keeping this one.
going to practice a little bit of patience while we wait for the uh, the opponent to keep or mulligan. We are going to be keeping this one. Um, what are we putting back? Like, Pestilence seems pretty good. Everything seems pretty good. I mean, a Ration Cleric, not great, but at least it blocks the ninjas. We have three more Pestilence in the deck. It's going to be a while before we can get there. I guess we'll ditch the Pestilence as good as it is. Gonna play a ration cleric so we don't get spell pierced. I guess we could still get four spiked, but uh, I'm not putting the opponent on four spike. We'll see. And even if they do four spike a ration cleric, so what? Oh, they just play out MC Hacker. I mean, we got a good blocker for it, so I don't really feel like I want to cast it down. Although, I don't know. Don't know, don't know, don't know. Spare supplies. Find another land. Pretty heavy on lands here. Now they do have the removal spell. So they're going to be able to get in with MC Hacker here. Uh, which doesn't just draw them a card. They do have to discard as well. Is that true hero with the raid? Hello everybody. Thanks for coming down. Uh, thanks so much for the raid. Um, my name's Cooper. We're playing some Popper here. Orzov Pestilence versus Is It Fairies. And, uh, how's everyone doing? I uh, hope you, hope your stream went all right. <laughs> Glad to hear it. Oh, I'm doing okay. They're going to counterspell the core Sky Fisher. Alright, let's uh, kill this ninja. Agrabolus reveals Preordain. And they cast the Preordain immediately. Uh, two to the bottom, find an island, passes back. Uh, we find another land. We have all lands. Let's use these spare supplies. Draw another card. Find Thraben Inspector. Uh, play the Thraben Inspector, and we'll play a Guild Gate. I guess we could play the Basilisk Gate, and then we could just draw the card from the clue. Let's do that. Now we get to draw the clue. Draw the card from the clue. End of turn. Okay, so they're actually going to use a Scred on the Thraben Inspector, which means they probably have a Ninja in hand. And we do not have any Snuff Outs. Ah, oh, it's a deep dish, too. And, yep, yeah, replay Augur of Bolus. Gets a Lightning Bolt. 
find spare supplies, they're tapped out. Find suffocating fumes, that doesn't do anything on this board. Play the spare supplies. And pause. Uh, find another gate. Oh, just a bit of juice and water. Oh, this sucks. Suffocating fumes doesn't do anything. Find Omen of the Dead. I guess we can get back, uh... Of course, Skyfisher with this. Yeah, this is some pretty heavy flooding. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight lands in the top 16, so half of our draws have been lands. Exactly, handsome. Find a Thraven Inspector. They have five cards in hand, one of which we know to be Lightning Bolt. Let's play the card they know about. Gets Counterspelled. Play the card they don't know about. Alright, it resolves. And gets hit by a Scred, we know they have Lightning Bolt. Oh, we're in big trouble, friends. Let's crack the clue, see what we can draw. Find another land. <laughs> Aw. I guess we're going to be fighting for a positive league in the last match. Because I think this game is pretty much over. I mean, we still have a bit of life, right? But the opponent has been drawing so many extra cards. With the ninja, with the auger, and now they have the monarch. I mean, no, absolutely we can't. The opponent got frustrated with us for not conceding before, so we have to uh, play into that frustration. Opponent never should have shown me the, uh, the crack in their armor. Guten Tag, Storm. Speaking of storms, here's a Storm of the Brain, which opponent immediately casts. And a Tolarian Terror. Prismatic Strands. Ah, this is not going to save us. Another land! Let's go! Lands for days, chat. Lands for days. Let's see that counterspell.
Why not? No, no, don't do that. You gotta nice them. I mean, that's what I'm going to do. That's what I choose to do. Hand seems good. Get to play Dombre or Cleric into Inspiring Overseer. Too bad we're not on the play, but uh, have we actually fought any Koldotha Burn yet? I think we have not. Because the one deck that I thought was Koldotha turned out to be um, Mogwarts. <laughs> Thanks, Ansem. Well, it looks like no Koldotha burn. No, no, it was just uh, from the um, the lands they were playing. Initially, I thought it was Koldotha, because what other deck is going to start with a uh, Ancient Den, Koldotha or Affinity? But uh, we quickly realized that it was Mogwarts. But yeah, some, actually, now that you mention it, um, some Mogwarts decks have played Koldotha because it gives you kind of like a card advantage with your um, Dark Dweller Oracle. So this is interesting, um, making me think probably uh, Jeskai Blink. Uh, regardless, we've got four copies of Dust to Dust in the sideboard, so we're feeling pretty good about that. And we'll gain two life. Would have been nice to actually have kept this, but we got a counterspell out of their hand. This that's excellent. They're gonna use a counterspell for our Dawnbringer cleric. That's a win for us. Yeah, Thraben would have been pretty nice on turn one. You're right. Oh, they're holding up Counterspell Magic again. I think I'm still going to throw this Overseer into it. I guess we could play Thraben Inspector, see if they want to counter again. And then we could, if they counter Thraben Inspector, we could play the Bajooka Ball, get rid of two Counterspells out of the Graveyard. Hmm. I mean, it's not like getting an Ephemerate. Thraben into Core Skyfisher? Okay, so they'll let that resolve. Kind of feel like they have counter magic up here. Let's waste their mana and just crack the clue. Opt. Oh, that's something interesting. We don't see opt very much in the format. There's so many options for, uh, for uh, cantrips. Uh, we have access to preordain, ponder, brainstorm... So, very rare to see Opt. So, they're going to Cleansing Wildfire here. Uh, one of the namesake cards of the deck. Go get a Mountain. Do they have another land drop? They do. I mean, it's... I don't know if it's spectacularly bad. I would call it mediocre. Oh, and here's a Thought Cast. Refilling their hand. Don't mind hitting that Bajooka Bog now. You get a bunch of good hits and opt. Ooh, Pestilence.
And then, yeah, we can core Skyfisher the Bajuka Bog back later to continue to uh, assault their graveyard. That's a pretty good hit, actually. Um, it means that if they're playing Terror, it's going to be pretty hard for them to play a Terror this turn. They end up just playing a... Uh, a five mana mole drifter. Which is going to be pretty good if they have a femorate to back that up on a later turn. We don't really have a way to get rid of it right away. Classic foil. Oh, we get the cast down for the Mole Drifter. Wonderful. Oh, that's excellent. We can even uh, Basilisk Gate stuff. Like, Basilisk Gate's only worth plus two. It's not really that great right now. I think it would probably rather play Cast Down plus a Ration Cleric. Or we could, uh, we could attack... And then Core Sky Fisher Thraben Inspector, and then replay Thraben Inspector. That uses all of our mana, gets a better creature out. Kind of like that line. Let's do that. And we still have another core Skyfisher to bounce the Bajuka Bog. Bajuka bouncing. The old Bog bounce. So, like, for example, we could activate Basilisk Gate and then play core Skyfisher, bounce Bog, replay Bog. Uh, late to dinner mole drifter? Nope. Straight up cast mole drifter. Eight cards in hand for the opponent. They've played a land this turn, I think. No, they have not. They have not yet played a land. No, my precious. So they play a bridge. I think it's also going to be pretty important for me to uh, to play rather quickly. This could be a very grindy match. Ooh, Omen. That's interesting. You get that Mole Drifter out of here. Um, what do we do? What do we do? I think we Basilisk Gate the Overseer, attack for some damage, and then maybe just play the Arashian Cleric. I'm going to uh, target the Thraben Inspector here so we can attack in with the most creatures. Alright, so they're going to Galv Blast in response, sure. Attack. They are going to block here, sure. Kind of like Omen of the Dead. If we get Thraben Inspector back, we can just replay it right now. And then we still have Core Skyfisher to use Omen of the Dead again later. That's some value. Oh, here's an evoked mole drifter, so the ephemerate nonsense is about to start. Now the smart money is in the doubters.
Journey to Nowhere. Probably getting rid of my core Skyfisher. Uh, yep. Leagues close in, what, like 9 or 10 hours? I really want to cast this down. They could have another Ephemerate. That would be brutal. Nice. Oh, that's so good that that worked. Attack for one, put him to 13, unless they use a removal spell. That's amazing. Of course, Skyfisher, bounce Omen of the Dead, Omen of the Dead, return Inspiring Overseer. Getting some real good value out of this. Oh my god, they that is a mistake, I think. Because now I get to Omen of the Dead back the core Skyfisher. Which is the best thing for Omen of the Dead to target besides maybe Custody Squire. Yeah, get back that core Skyfisher bonus. That's turn back. Would be nice to use this Bajuka Bog again at some point. Get rid of three Mole Drifters and three Galve Blasts before they can get any of them back. They do have five cards in hand, so we are still like playing magic here. Okay, here's another Mole Drifter going back up to six cards. Wow. Power of Mole Drifter, friends. That's their fourth Mole Drifter, by the way. Lone missionary, whatever. Not worried about your life, your life total. It's not a big deal. Uh, we could suffocating fumes chainer's edict. Doesn't seem all that hot. Let's play the core skyfisher. See if they have counter spell. Looks like no. Get omen back. Hey, Grelium. Um, currently, I do not uh, do Dono decks. So that is something I will do in the future, though. Um, I imagine it would cost uh, probably 25. Um, yeah. Ooh. If we get back... Dawnbringer Cleric, we can kill the Journey to Nowhere. which gets us a core Skyfisher, which lets us return either Omen of the Dead or Bajuka Bog. Ah, oh, tough choice. Tough choice. Do we get back Omen of the Dead to continue this amazing combo? Like, there's another core Skyfisher in the graveyard. The value is just too good. I'd love to Bajuka Bog the opponent's graveyard, but we got a core Skyfisher in the graveyard. We want Omen of the Dead. Uh, what did we lose to, chat? 
Oh, we lost to Is It Fairies? And what was the other one? I love Course Skyfisher and Omen of the Dead. We are down on time, though. That is something to be aware of. Uh, yep, see, should have used that Bajuka Bog. Late to dinner would have been a dead card. Just got uh, carried away, but carried away by the value. Can you blame me? We can get this pestilence to resolve. I think we stand a pretty good chance. Oh, they took it out my Basilisk Gate. I'll go get a Swamp. They only have 22 cards left in their deck. Yeah, Mole Drifters. And uh, Galve Blasts. They use Galve Blasts to uh, to kill you with um, the uh, the red creature that returns an instant or sorcery from your graveyard to your hand, plus Ephemerate. So they can just Galve Blast you infinitely. It takes mana, but, you know, they, they can just kill you. <clears throat> well, they're tapped out. Seems like a good time to resolve Pestilence. Do we do the one damage? Get rid of the lone missionary before they can do any shenanigans? I don't think it matters. If they're going to ephemerate something, I don't think lone missionary really matters. That's the one. Thank you. Arden Elementalist. What's really important is getting rid of these mole drifters, so Pestilence on two. And I guess we get to see at this point if they play the Dawnbringer Cleric. Okay, here's a Journey to Nowhere. That resolves. Gets rid of probably a core Skyfisher here. Yep. Clocks are still very close here. Yeah, we're going to take the four. Go to 17. And then go to 16 if we activate Pestilence for one. They're going to gain three with their food. 19 cards in their library, five cards in hand. Let's uh, preserve our life total a little bit here. Guardian of the Guild Pact, wonderful. All right, let's clear their board. Attack.
Um, we've seen Counterspell, and they've only played one. They have 19 cards left in the library and five cards in hand. Seems likely that they probably have a Counterspell. Let's play the Arashian Cleric. I don't want to lose my Guardian of the Guild Pact to a Counterspell. All right, they do Counterspell the Cleric. And let's have six. They do not have a removal spell for the Dawnbringer Cleric. That's a bonus for us. And they pass right back. Oh, Basilisk Gate, how I missed you. Activate. And attack for four. And we can just pass the turn and start cracking clues. No need to play Guardian of the Guild Pact into another potential counterspell. We've got a pretty good board here. Um, it's up to them to interact with what we're doing at the moment. Oh, and Dawnbringer Cleric is a very good way to do that. Damn. Alright, is what it is. We lose the Pestilence. Find another guild gate. Play the gate. Attack with a 5 7. They choose not to chump. That's actually kind of a surprise. And I've got two more clues here, so maybe we just pass the turn. Don't give them the uh, the guardian for their counterspell. Um, I I don't know that they have counterspell. I have no known cards, but um, just from you know like what they have left, I'm kind of assuming. Uh, why scoured barons? The uh, the land choices that I have are very very limited because I'm playing basilisk gate. So, what reason do you have to play scoured barons? Chukabog, I love you. It's Chainer's Edict. They're going to disrupt. Uh, yeah, I will pay one. Al Gorelium, thank you so much for coming by today. Really appreciate that. Hope you have a wonderful day. Catch you next time. Oh, they're going to ephemerate. That's going to get rid of my Omen of the Dead? Sure, that's fine. Yep. I'm not even going to bother scrying. Don't care. Nope. I want mana to be able to activate my Basilisk Gate. That's more important to me. Oh, I guess we still would have had enough, actually. I kind of think I play Core Sky Fisher, Bounce Bog, Play Bog.
We are quite down on clock now. But it looks like we're winning this game. Um, but yeah, I've used more than half the time on my clock here to be able to win this game. Uh, so definitely going to have to be worried about time for the rest of this match. Ooh, Kenku Artificer. That gives them a good blocker, good, good blocker. But what we can do is we can Suffocating Fumes, and then that kills this. We Basilisk Gate this, and then we have two lethal attackers. One, two, three, four, five, six. We don't have another untapped source, so we can't Chainer's Edict. Nice. Okay. Uh, so yeah, we managed to win game one, and now we get four dust to dust. Uh, we can take out a ration cleric. I like the Dawnbringer cleric, so we might even play another one, depending. Um, suffocating fumes seems quite poor. Hits it kills almost nothing. Kind of like this iteration. Guess we don't need the third Dawnbringer cleric. We can probably just play with two. I think I would rather keep uh, Custody Squire, Goliath Paladin. Yeah, Spellbomb is interesting. We could definitely play Spellbomb. Kind of weird, we didn't see any of the uh, Ardent Elementalists. Grimwall. Oh my god, I'm sorry to hear that. Hopefully you can get your, uh, your info back. Oh, well, there are cheats for that nowadays, my friend. You can get um, apps for your computer that remember all your passwords. I would like to play spell bombs. Yeah, Grimwall, absolutely true. I don't want to get rid of my Dawnbringers, though. What can I take out for Spell Bombs? Maybe I could take out one Pestilence. I don't know. Pestilence is pretty good. Alright. Let's do it. We have the dust to dust, but only one land. We're going to mulligan. No dust to dust. We'll keep it anyway. Get rid of a swamp. We get to play Thraven Inspector turn one, spare supplies turn two. Uh, no, there's no deadly dispute in this list. Thanks for the follow, friend. Oh yeah, that's a good point. Um, what is that? Uh, Slay Evil or something? Yeah, seems pretty safe actually to just get rid of those. I think with potential counterspell up, I don't know, do we just crack the clue token? Or do we try and get him to counter a spare supply as we get rid of a counterspell? Let's try and bait a counterspell out. Yeah, Destroy Evil is a great card. Okay, so yeah, it just resolves. So that was definitely the right choice then. Ooh, yeah, that's not too good, opponent. That's not too good. 
Missing your land drops. Has no red mana. Let's play Citadel Gate. Uh, black. Attack for two. And we can crack our clue token on the opponent's end step. Amazing card. Um, I really did not give it the respect it deserved when it came out. That card is so good. Oh my god, they missed their land drop again. Use the clue. Find spell bomb. Another basilisk gate. Let's go. Um, I think I'm just gonna start gating. Just to continue to waste their mana every single turn. Don't give them anything to counterspell. And we have... Uh, and I can still just play Spell Bomb here. You want to counter Spell Bomb? Okay, they find their land. They have a red source now. They are kind of far behind. Find another land. So let's see here. I could activate Basilisk Gate, play a tap land, or I could activate Basilisk Gate and activate spare supplies on their step on their turn. Let's do that. Go, go, Thraben Inspector! This Thraben Inspector is a beast. Thought cast. Are they going to tap out? I would love to play this Guardian of the Guild Pact if you don't want to hold up counter magic. All right, let's spare supplies. Another Chainer's Edict. And they go to discard. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we can double activate Basilisk Gate here. The problem is with one Basilisk Gate activation, we can no longer cast Guardian of the Guild Pack. So if they use a removal spell on Thraben Inspector, then we don't get to cast Guardian. Alright, do you have a removal spell? They don't? Oh, we are doing so much damage this turn. Put you to two. Wow. Raven Inspector and Basilisk Gate. What a team. Opponent thought casts. Plays Ancient Den. And here's a journey to nowhere for the Thraben Inspector. Thraben Inspector down. I mean they got they have a bunch of counter magic, I'm sure. Which is why I haven't been playing Guardian of the Guild Pact. Find another spell bomb. Play spell bomb. I'm gonna use one of them to cantrip here. Find another removal spell. All right, play, play uh, black dragon gate pass. Guarantee the guild pack is pretty important here. We can't have a counter spell if we can avoid it. Oh, I'm hmm. not a huge fan of the way I tapped. Guess I didn't have too much choice. I actually needed to use the black mana. This came into play tapped. 
So yeah, no choice there. I had to only uh, have one cast down up. Uh, okay, Thraven Inspector, let's go. I choose you. Resolve. So let's draw a card. Of course, Skyfisher. Very nice. Play the Skyfisher. So they are going to counterspell this. Reject. Counter target creature spell unless the place three. Exile it. Oh, shit. We even have a land drop here. But I was waiting. That sucks. Now, well, here's the uh, land drop of shame. A journey to nowhere. Uh, yeah, nothing we can really do about that. There's a mole drifter. They do have ephemerate. Well, they're going to draw some extra cards. But they're tapped out now. So we're going to be able to play our Guardian. So many gates. Let's go. Nothing for them to ephemerate. We have Spell Bomb if they try to reanimate Muldrifter. And there aren't many things they can do against a Guardian of the Guild Pact. Anyone in chat have any ideas on what they can do versus a Guardian? All right, they're going to evoke Muldrifter. If you have an Ephemerate to respond with, we will try to cast down in response to your Ephemerate. Okay. Yeah, um, I mean, Flaring Pain doesn't do anything, but Strands would. It would buy them some time. Thanks for the follow, friend. There's the Elementalist. I mean, Elementalist doesn't get anything. I don't care. Go for it. Flaring Pain doesn't remove protection. It removes... Uh, the protection from damage, so they still can't target. Uh, fire, ice, no, because each side is its own color. So if they try to ice the guardian, it's still a blue spell. There we go. We managed to win it. And finally, uh, managed to get a positive league, and that was a really fun one. I really like this deck, not only because we won, just because it's a fun thing to play. All right, friends. So this is the deck we were playing today, Pestilence Gate. And out of all of my gate experiments, this is definitely one of my favorites. I've tried it with many things. I've tried it with uh, Boros. That was pretty good. Tried it with Slivers. That was okay. Tried it with Bogles, that was mediocre. Tried it with Infect, that was pretty good. And, uh, yeah, I mean, like, Gates is something to pretty much consider anytime you're running a creature deck uh, in two colors or more. While we don't have the um, the same kind of value that Caw Gate has, uh, we, we do still have quite a bit of value. The, uh, the Omen of the Dead package with Course Skyfisher, um, was very helpful. Uh, I think we probably should go up to a second Omen of the Dead. I'm just having trouble finding space for it. The The list is quite tight, and um, 
choosing to remove any card at this point is a difficult choice for me. Uh, while we didn't run into Kaldotha Burn for once, uh, I think the Arashian Cleric is a, uh, a fine card to be uh, to be playing, you know, hedging for that matchup. And even when we weren't running into that, like, it was still a fine blocker for the various ninjas and such. Blocks uh, MC Hacker very well. Um, yeah, I, I liked having access to all the removal. While it is, you know, like, a lot of removal, um, having a full four chainers, a full four cast down means that... Uh, when we need removal, we probably had it. Uh, you know, it was kind of clutch um, in those um, the goblin matchup for sure, being able to just have something to to interact with them. Uh, yeah, really like the um, the sideboard too. Could definitely, yeah. I think that I think there's definitely some things where uh, based on the taste of the pilot, you know, you can be moving some things around, changing some numbers here or there. But uh, I really, really like this as a starting point, and um, I also really, really like the uh, the gates and the bajuka bog. Um, while we don't have a lot of room for uh, any other kind of utility lands, if there is one non-gate land that I want to run in this deck, hundred percent bajuka bog. Um, it's going to be good in actually uh, a few matchups. Um, I mean, obviously, Demir Terror is going to be number one, but uh, one of the matchups we just saw, um, where we were fighting uh, Jeskai Wildfire, Bajuka Bog is going to be pretty good there. And then also um, against Affinity, even, Bajuka Bog is going to be good versus Affinity. So don't forget that. Uh, while I would love to find room for Deadly Dispute so we could play Icar Wellspring over the spare supplies. Um, I, I did really appreciate how uh, spare supplies, you know, like I could just hold my mana so that if I had an opportunity to cast something down, you know, I had the mana for cast down, and then if nothing presented itself, I could, you know, crack spare supplies or crack the clue. So having, you know, like this as an option for something to do with all of our extra mana was really nice. So yeah, definitely like the spare supplies this league. Um, while unfortunately we didn't really get a chance to use our big mana stuff, um, I do like uh, these cards as the top of our curve. Hopefully um, I'll be able to play the deck again soon, um, and uh, maybe then you know we'll get some use out of the uh, the five drops. But uh, that is something to consider. You know maybe the deck would just be better off with four Guardian of the Guild Pacts and two Omen of the Deads. So we could take out the Custody Squires, take out the Paladins, and then just really focus on the Gates, right? Because Guardian of the Guild Pack is one of the best cards we can use at Basilisk Gate, 100%. Um, anyways, uh, if you're into kind of like a an Orzov mid-range kind of creature control kind of strategy, if, uh, you know, like um, you wish that Mono Black Devotion was a cool deck and would actually be, be playable, you know, maybe try this one. Um... Whether the you try it with gates or if you try it with the the more traditional mana base, um, I would recommend this deck. I think it's a lot of fun, and uh, with all the life gain that's available to it, might even have some match against Koldotha.